Welcome back everyone. So this is going to be a different video from what I usually do. And this is going to be the ideas that I have for future Power and Revolution games. Um, maybe 2023. And even... <clears throat> Excuse me. And even the next game engine for Geopolitical Simulator 5. Um, and if there's a Geopolitical Simulator 5, um, the updates need to be incorporated into the current game and for that, uh, maybe you could even decide whether you want to incorporate the updates into the uh, current game or you can wait. But uh, as of now, <clears throat> whenever Everson updates the game and you you're already in the current game it can cause a couple bugs and that can sometimes literally destroy the game that you uh created um it happened to me with uh the 47th president series it, it became so bugged that it it was just uh it was just annoying to play. So, that needs to be addressed. Um, the bugs in the game need to be addressed. And Eversim has been doing a good job so far. Better than they've ever done um, since the Geopolitical Simulator 1. You usually had maybe one update and then you just had to wait until the uh next game that comes about so <clears throat> the reason why i picked the united states right now um is because for one thing i'm from the united states so i don't understand all the aspects of other countries so I figured to speak from the standpoint of being from the US so one of the things I came up with was to have a joint international task force and what that could do is uh, the terrorist groups that's in different countries you can get together but you would have to get permission from that country to go in and take out their terrorist groups. So, for example, the uh, drug cartels in Mexico. So, Mexico could reach out and say, we need help with uh, eliminating the drug cartels. And <clears throat> let's say... The first groups that would probably answer that call would be the United States and Canada. And the hosting country would control how many troops actually come in. Because you still... Excuse me. You still don't want... Whether you're allies or not, you don't want this dominant force that's coming into your country and just taking over everything and one of the things would be once you eliminate that problem everything will be handed back over <coughs> everything will be handed back over to the hosting country and Again, that hosting country would have control over who gets approved to come in. So, 
from playing Mexico, um, Australia is hostile towards Mexico, and I believe so is Israel. So, obviously, those two countries would be rejected if they want to be involved. We, You wouldn't want a hostile country coming in and uh, doing that. So, it would be just like the United States having some kind of issue and having Russia and China come over. That would be... And and North Korea. That would basically be asinine to do that. So, the other thing would be... So, let's go to... Immigration. So, under immigration... If you're playing the United States, then Border Patrol should be in this category. There should be a, uh, maybe a tab for Border Control. And how that would work would be very similar to how police is. <clears throat> so... Maybe you have a drug task force. Um, maybe like a canine. Um, let's see what else. And just overall manpower, you would control that. So let's say. Let's say uh, manpower is at a hundred, hundred thousand, and you could just increase that up to a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand, and you would be able to see the. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to this. You'd be able to see like the uh, immigration or illegal immigration rate. So, see how this is, which is absolutely ridiculous. But again, um, yeah, I'm not gonna go there. So that could be another aspect of a new game. Um, the next thing I would go down to would be. Diplomacy. <clears throat> so, in the 2022 version, you know, um, let's see, let's go into a conflict here. Or actually, let me just go with Russia and Ukraine. <clears throat> so, Russia invades Ukraine, and as a world leader, you would be able to condemn that action. So in some instances, you would just condemn it and leave it at that. You would condemn it and then maybe push for, uh, for peace talks on both sides for both parties to come to the, uh, to the table and talk things out. And you could also broker, if you're a neutral country, you could broker a peace deal. And actually just overall host the, uh, the, the peace talks which would uh, help your country's relations with both countries. Um, and then the other thing would be to threaten sanctions. And as an outside country that's not directly involved, 
for the moment, you could threaten to get militarily involved and depending on the strength of your country or the strength of your country and the country you would be assisting, that could change the tide of what that country, the country that you're going against, that could change the tide of uh, how they feel about the situation militarily. So, <clears throat> so let's say Mali and the United States, well, obviously the United States is stronger militarily, but if you add China and Russia to that, that would push that all the way up to probably about here. And of course, the United States probably would never back down from that. Um, but it, it would be reason to reconsider what you're dealing with and uh that country could overall just back off and if you're threatening to get involved and maybe you have a few ships in the area that are increasing and you, your country could be seen going to the country they're assisting and going to their military bases and dropping off equipment that could be enough for the like for instance for Ukraine to maybe reach out to another country for assistance and if they're turned down then it could force them to go to the bargaining table which you could also uh I would like to see uh, ceasefires in uh, maybe the next series or the next edition of Power and Revolution or the next gaming engine. And <clears throat> the other thing would be... Um, or diplomacy, you could send your minister of foreign affairs or in the case of the United States, you would send your secretary of state or your deputy secretary of state to that country to try to broker some kind of peace deal. And just like when, uh, there's a situation in the UN, your ambassador will ask, how do you want to uh, go about voting on the situation? <clears throat> Excuse me. How you want to go about dealing with the situation, you basically tell them. So, there could be a uh, limited list you don't want to really get carried away with uh, some bargaining posture. So, um, it, it could be a variety of different things. I haven't really thought all of that out yet, but uh, maybe no military within certain distance or so to the border just, just anything that uh again i i haven't thought out that entire part yet but it, it's something to think about and i think it would actually benefit the game at least for uh realism um Let's go on to energy. So the last two years, energy has been something that has really come up. Um, 
I know in the European Union, which are mostly NATO countries also, and the United States. So, <clears throat> energy needs to be more incorporated into the uh, economy. And... have uh, strategic oil reserves for each country so and actually show what the uh, price of oil is per barrel I believe that's done already um let's see So it doesn't say price per barrel. So that could be something that could be uh that could be displayed and show the average uh gas price for your country. So <clears throat> if people start once you see it going to a certain level, you know people are going to start possibly protesting or your approval rating is just going to plummet. And you could uh, give more incentives to the oil companies to uh, produce more oil. And that kind of goes to something else that I have in mind but I'm going to address this first so said show the average gas price for the country um, for gasoline diesel and probably heating oil and <clears throat> so this is going to go to something else now um each country to sit with, uh, I say the top, since it's a game, maybe the top 10 CEOs and you can have a discussion on how to make the economy better or how to make the workforce better. So more than likely, if you have high taxes, those businesses are going to pressure you to lower the taxes so they can increase their uh, manpower and overall they want to increase their profits. So just like you see, if you're from the United States, you see the president sitting with uh, different CEOs of different companies. And it's usually along those lines, how to make things better, um, get a whole lot of feedback and <clears throat> you could prom make promises with those uh, CEOs and overall what that will probably do, what that should do is maybe come election time, that sector may be for you more than others and you kind of see that with like the different associations something similar to that not anything real complex because you still want to make the game some aspects of the game simple um and let's go to uh the economy so with the economy and under currency there should be print money take money out of circulation and even place currency on gold on the gold standard 
place country on the silver standard or place the country on gold and silver. And then just the flat out fiat currency, which is basically just printing money, but it's not backed by anything. And also under currency, uh, send stimulus checks. So that would happen if you were in a recession and you don't have you're in a situation where you don't have high inflation. And you could pick who the uh, stimulus checks go to. So if it's all taxpayers, maybe there's a bracket of people who make less than 100000 would get a certain amount. Or you could do it in different tiers. So, maybe one bracket gets a certain amount, another bracket may get higher or lower based off of what their income is or what their salary is for the year. And... So, let's see. So, that's just a few things. I um, want to go back to military now. So, one of the things that I really wish Power and Revolution had would be to have bombers. And what you could do is, so for example... If, if, uh, well, in this game, when Russia invades Ukraine and the U.S. is strongly against it, what the U.S. could do would be to fly bombers along the, uh, Along the border of <clears throat> Russia's uh, border of Russia's airspace, and the same for like the naval naval ships, like to do drills. Um. Oh, let me not get too off the subject, but for example, like for the bombers to be able to, just like you do with the ships, where you can basically click, let me show you, um, let's see. So for example, So I can do this, this, so so that whole route that I gave that that one ship to do, you should be able to do the same thing with the bombers. And that way you're controlling, not invading the other country's airspace and be more provocative, but just to send the message. So if they're doing something and that's your way of threatening to get involved, they would see that and based on your military power, maybe they will back down, but also maybe based on their military power and their allies' military power, maybe they won't back down. So then the ball is back in your court again. <clears throat> and 
The other thing would be to conduct military drills to basically send a message to whatever country you're having a conflict with. Um, again, that would have the same the same effect on just in general, like either that country is going to back down once they see that you're really not playing with them and or they'll just continue to do what they're doing and call your bluff. So it would be based on the type of government Again, who their allies are, what their military status is. Um, <clears throat> the other thing would be... Um, to publicize your alliance. So... Basically, recently, I believe, or earlier last year, China basically said that they're behind Russia and you see how Russia and China have kind of buddied up over the last few years to basically send a message to the US that they won't be intimidated and letting you know right off the bat that if anything happens they're they're going to be linked together and they have no issues with fighting against teaming up and fighting against the US and NATO. So the other the last thing I want to go over. Oh, I'm sorry. Um <clears throat> So you can have joint military drills and basically publicize that to show your alliance with whatever country you decide to align with and again I think um, when couple countries align with each other this military might needs to be um needs to be updated with like you should be able to click on certain alliances and be able to see what the real military might overall is so for instance NATO versus Russia, there should be some kind of status bar that you can see to see what the possibilities are with being able to take on that country or if it's just not worth the hassle and backing away from it. So I believe that's it with military. Now, the other thing is ideology. So, each country has their own different type of ideology and it's becoming more popular now with uh, this whole climate change agenda. So, When you come into office, you can choose what your agenda is. So if you're for climate change, then you would have advisors helping you go along that route. Maybe your ideology is your country first and you want to stop outsourcing everything and produce everything yourself so you could be self-reliant um and then <clears throat> you could be pro nuclear power 
or natural gas or just pro fossil fuels and that type of ideology would affect your your role as the country's leader and citizens would react to you based off of what your ideology is whether they agree with it disagree with it how effective are you and be able to just like in real life maybe somebody feels a certain way towards a certain ideology but based off the success of it you actually pull those citizens over to your side and I believe that's going to be it for some of the ideas that I had so if these things sound good to you uh, you know click the like and hopefully if everyone's on the same page then some of these things can be picked up by Everson and incorporated into either the next game or the game after that so you guys can let me know what you think of these ideas if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to help with the channel and I will see you soon.